And maybe he's thinking, oh, Peter's there. <laughs> what kind of a tool did you take the bark off? Actually, I'm using, I, this is my basic tool. Every time I do demos, I have the bark cutter. This one, I use this to split the trunk. And this is for the foliage. What did you were taking the bark off? Oh. The next actual knife, and normally they sell you with the blade on it, but this one has a bark stripper on it. This is like about three, five dollars, something like that. And I seldom see them like when you go to store, but when you go to conventions like that, they have they have a lot of these. Sometimes you can buy three for 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 ten bucks like that, and it's very very sharp and it's good for. If you want to clean your uh, trunk like that, you know, it's like peeling up and, um, potatoes. Harry knows that when you get a, a good treat like this, um, you know, it's everybody's dream. Yeah. And there's no more of those, you know, snail type of uh, California juniper that's a long bing gun. And, and if it does come, uh, come up like that, to the auction like that, you have a lot of people feeling on it. A lot of the times I notice um, on California junipers, if they've been sitting on the pot for a long time, those are dangerous. You repot them and they'll die. Yeah. They're weak? Because they're not weak, uh, they're strong, but what it is is it's been sitting on the pot for a long time and the old soil are there. So you're talking about the, uh, um, the composed granite for eight years in that pot. So when you try to break it, that's when you lose the tree. Oh, yeah, so the concrete, yeah. so what, what I notice in everybody's uh, yard when they repot this tree, you know, having the old soil like that, they take at least about an inch, an inch or two and on all around, and they put new soil, that's repotting to them. But what I do when I collect, I shake everything, nothing out, you know. But I think getting this tree is is basically the aftercare one once you get them. You know, uh, I don't babysit them. I don't put no uh, B1B or anything like that. Anything that no. I, but what I do collect in order for the tree to survive is the the old cones that drops with with mycorrhiza on it. I collect those and the DG that grows right next to that tree. And then I, I use pomace and all that and and a lot of mister. That's it. Um, Try to uh, water it once, uh, good water. After that, all mister. The mister is set at three o'clock because that's up in the mound, uh, that's what they call the morning dew. There's no rain coming from, from below, so, so and that's how they survive. How often does it get misted? The what? How often does it get missed? Every day. Just once uh, a day. One, one early in the morning, three, three to four. Um, lunch time and then uh, and then at night that's it. But nothing here. And so, sometimes I cover the trunk with plastic. You know, the most important is preparing the tree once you put it in a training pot. If you haven't done your work once you collected it, what's going to happen is as soon as it lives, you have another problem. Oh, it's not going to feed in the pot. You know, so you ended up getting a real big pot and a smaller tree, which is supposed to be the uh, the opposite. So what I do is I chop all the big roots, make sure that it's flat, and use a lot of prayers. <laughs> Don't forget. Our master is in the house. And so this is a very healthy tree. The reason it's I can say it's healthy. Everything is green. It's really green. It's it's uh, it's it, it's it looks healthy. It looks uh, it looks like it's had a few flowers on it in the last uh, two or three weeks. So we have a really healthy tree. The other thing about the tree is that the, the center uh, part of it uh, has some interesting character to it. You see a little bit of twisting, and even the one on the right. Uh, has a little bit of a character, and that's what Harry, Harry likes. He likes trees that have character. Something that's straight doesn't really have any character or interest. So he looks for trees that have 
some type of character to them that provides an interest that goes beyond uh, the tree itself. But his style in styling today is different than other masters. And that he has taught us that the styling has, uh, has a flavor that, that's similar to a cloud. So you see as he begins to unfold and, and move into the, the final styling that many of the, the green parts, uh, for example, what Peter's doing here, has kind of a cloud effect to it. So it kind of moves itself out and creates kind of a lift and a movement uh, in, in much of his work. So that's, that's kind of the basic style that if you see one of his trees, that's the first thing you look for is the fact that much of the branches come out and kind of float. So there's nothing underneath and there would be openings that will create this cloud-like look. And then the layers, of course, is where you get the triangle. In the so we kind of look at ways in which we conserve our energy. Because usually when you're in the, in the mountains digging, you have about three or four hours. That's it. So you start digging at 7, and you'll get done at 11 o'clock, 11.30 in the morning. And then you pack up, put your trees in your car, your vehicle, and then you head home because you've got to get back through Los Angeles to get back to the uh, to your house. So you don't have much time, so you try to conserve your time a little bit so that uh, in doing so you can get as many trees as you can, but also to get the trees that are of, of good quality. So we usually stay close to the road, and we have pretty good luck. We want short ones, and uh, Harry does a lot of demos and workshops, so he's always collecting trees so that he has a good inventory for uh, for his, uh, uh, his first of all, I'd like to say I'd like to thank the guys for coming. I saw this same team at the Huntington. They're very efficient. They don't talk much. They mostly do hand signals. It seems like or a mental telepathy or something. It's incredible. They they work through a tree much bigger than this in a couple hours. They're very efficient and. Uh, yeah.
That's pretty cool to see him. See him doing it right here in front of you. This close. Yeah, oh yeah. Thank you so much for your work there. We appreciate it. All right, one more thing, folks. We got a birthday cake for Mr. Harry. Would you all gather around a minute? We have a gift and a cake. He's going to cut the cake. It has a uh, picture of Harry with uh, a California juniper. It says, Happy 95th birthday, Harry Harrell. And uh, oh, we're going to get him a piece with his face on it. How about that? All right. All right. All right. 95 years. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Harry. Happy birthday to you. All right. Okay, every year we get Harry a card. And I thought to myself, what does Harry need another card for? But in a lot of the pictures I saw, he has a hat on. So this year we got him a hat. It says, Harry, happy 95th anniversary with a San Diego Bonsai logo on it. And it's green. Oh, he's going to cut it. I think he's hungry. He's going to just go ahead and cut it up for us. Would you want to try on your hat, Harry? They want to take a picture of you. All right. Nice. Thanks a lot, Harry, for coming. All the many years, we thank you so much. All right. What an honor. One, two, three. Got it. Okay, once again, thanks for inviting Harry again his birthday here. I know it's a traditional uh, every year, every year. I'm glad he made it, and now the tree is here. Hold on, Harry.